What's up, guys? It is Jake here. It's been a while, so I wanted to do an update video on my current Better Touch tool setup. Uh, it's just been a little while, and a lot of people are still coming from that Golden Chaos video that I made. So I just want to show you guys what I got going on. Um, also, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. That's crazy. Uh, so appreciative of everybody that has subscribed. And if you have ideas for videos or you want to see anything in particular, definitely please comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see, whether that's more better touch tool stuff or other Mac software. Just throw it down there and we'll see what we can do. So for the most part, I'm running a stock AquaTouch setup. Honestly, I have been just loving AquaTouch. It is so good. There are so many supported apps and I absolutely love the design language of it all. You'll notice here that I do have my subscriber count skill. Still shout out to you all 1020 of you guys. You guys are awesome. Touch Bar Squad. And I really wanted to keep the design language the same as AquaTouch. So the, the way that I did this is I added it to the Quick Strip. So if you go to Quick Strip, um, I used the same script that I used. I did a video. Um, it was the Better Touch Tool in depth tutorial follow up. I will link that below on how to get this script and how to use it. Um, but basically, just copy and pasted that in here. And then I looked at pretty much all the settings within the, um, that's not good <clears throat> because we're, it's weird because we're in better touch tour now, but um, I looked at all of the settings for the quick strip. Like you just copy the corner radius, you copy the padding, the free space after the button and the button color, background color and the text color. I edited a little bit because when it's that gray, like these buttons, it looks a little weird. But yeah, to copy any of the design language, you basically just quick click on the button that you want, go over to common, and you can see that you get the button background color right here. You can check the icon width and the height, the font size, all of this stuff, and then you can just modify your own button to look exactly like that. So it has that clean aesthetic look just like the rest of AquaTouch. Now for apps that I added, almost every app that I use was already in here. Like all of the Adobe stuff, all of, you know, pretty much everything is good to go. There were two apps that I had to add. One was Final Cut Pro. And then the other was Adobe Audition. And these are these are pretty personalized to exactly what you would want and need. Um, so I'll go over Final Cut first. So if we go ahead and open uh, what these buttons do, I only have three buttons because that's really all you need. You don't really need, uh, you know, much going on at least i don't so for me all i need are is is these three buttons one this is called the this is the color grade button i click it and it changes my workspace into the color grading workspace so in order to do that normally i'd have to go to window workspaces color and effects and that was, I was just like getting really annoyed having it change between the color grade. And then if I want to go back, I just click the default. And it's just so much easier than going into the window and clicking the workspaces. The other one is adding a custom LUT. So normally when you do this, you have to go into the effects, go to color, and then you can find the LUT button right here. So what you can do is this menu, I had a lot of trouble accessing just like trying to target it with better touch tool. So what I ended up having to do is you can actually, you can cut, you can sorry right click and you can make a default video effect. And basically what that does is when you go into edit, it shows up in the menu bar as add a custom LUT for option E. And this allows you to target that action in the menu bar. So if I wanted the color curves to be the default video effect, now you can see that add color curves is in as that preset. But I 
prefer to have it as the custom LUT just because I'm I'm constantly applying LUTs to my footage. I also do have to, uh, I do some color curves as well, but you gotta pick one. Maybe I'll figure that out later. And just to show you what it does, click the custom LUT button when a clip is highlighted and it will add a LUT to the clip. And then I can go and select the LUT. I'm typically using the Vlog to Rec 709 for the GH5. And the other app that I added is Adobe Audition. And this is kind of set up specifically for my workflow, but you can learn to set it up for your workflow. Um, so you can do some pretty cool stuff like capture the noise print. It's pretty simple. So if we have a little bit of audio here, ha ha ha. And you want to um, capture noise print, all, now all you have to do is capture noise print. You don't have to go effects, capture noise print, and then noise reduction. So you select the whole thing. Now you do the noise reduction, and that will clean up your audio, get rid of some of that background noise. Then I have this button called process audio. And basically what you can do is you can set up an automated workflow so that it will do multiple effects that you want. And so I know exactly what effects I want. So all you have to do to set that up is go to your favorites and you can start recording favorite. And then what you're gonna do is uh, favorites programmably being recorded, let you one. Yes, exactly. So now you're gonna do all the actions that you want to the audio. For example, if you wanted to do a multi-band compressor, have all your settings set up, and then click apply. That's gonna apply the compressor. And then if you wanted to, let's say, adjust the timing and pitch. So if you wanted to shift the pitch uh, to really high, <laughs> you can apply it. And basically it's recording all of these, uh, all of these things. So we have this uh, test automation sorry automation test now if you go i'm gonna undo um i'll get a new a new audio clip this is the new audio clip that we are messing with this is the new audio clip that we are messing with okay if you couldn't hear that i'm going to put it in there but if we find our new favorite that we just made and it's called automation test it is going to go through the actions we just recorded and now <laughs> what i have here is i have all the workflow set up that makes the audio exactly how i want it to sound and i i just click press audio and now bang it is set perfect for uh show time and it just, it saves you so much time after just like having to go, oh, do all these, all these effects in between. And then, um, and then I have the de -esser. The de sometimes has to be adjusted for each individual track, depending on certain things. But it basically, if you hear that S sound, it's a, it's a very high pitch sound. Microphones tend to uh, over-exaggerate that s -s -s sometimes. So you can get rid of that by DSing the audio. And uh, so I just use that as a separate process because it tends to be different for every, for each audio track. So those are the two apps that I added in there. And the only other things that I have are trackpad gestures. Um, I have this uh, rotate right and rotate left for the volume. You're basically using your trackpad as a volume knob. And I did do a video on this. If you want to go check that out, the link will be in this, the description. But this is honestly one of my favorite things to do ever on the trackpad. Now, I'm going to record the video of this just so you guys can see what is going on but you can see I'm rotating my fingers and I'm adjusting the volume on the computer. It's so much fun and it's so cool and it's honestly just so much easier 
uh, to adjust the volume that way. I don't have to reach up to the touch bar to do it, or I don't have to do it in the system. Your hands are already on the trackpad most of the time. So this is just a phenomenal way to adjust the volume and you're always adjusting the volume in some capacity. And then the other uh, trackpad settings that I have set up are the three finger tap, which is gonna open a link in a new window, three finger swipe right and three finger swipe left. And those are so that, and I will show you. So I'll show you all of these in action. So three finger tap, boom, opens up a new link in another window. Uh, if you wanna listen to music or just watch Graham Stephan in the future, you can three finger tap those and then use the three finger swipe right. Ah! No. Then you can use the three finger swipe to swipe in between the tabs that you have. So it's like, it's just really nice to be able to boom, open up a tab. Oh, three finger swipe, right? You don't have to like move your mouse all the way up here and do it. It just, it, for me, it makes the flow. It, it feels like it flows so much better. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a while, so I definitely wanted to give you guys a little update. Uh, ask any questions you have on Better Touch Tool. I get them all the time. I try and answer all of them that I can. And if I can't, I will try and send you somewhere to someone that can answer your question. Um, but yeah, definitely drop a comment. Let me know some of the stuff that you guys want to see on this channel. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you guys again for a thousand subscribers. Love you guys. Peace.